talented, funny, beloved comedian who just set a record. Listen to this. Three uh, sold-out performances at Madison Square Garden. Wow. That, that's a lot of tickets, ladies and gentlemen. That's three. He has a new comedy special entitled Louis C.K. Live at the Comedy Store, and it'll be available for download tomorrow. Here he is, Louis C.K. For the time. Not bad. <clears throat> Good to have you here. <clears throat> I appreciate right, Sorry. They go crazy. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you coming out in the uh, in the storm. How's your family? Is your family all safe and ready to go here? Everybody's okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are the are the girls looking forward to a big New York City blizzard? Yeah, they're very excited. You know, it's they, for us it's bad news and for them it's great news. Yep, because they get probably one or two school days off. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I try to keep them, you know, ready for the, I tell them we're probably not going to make it, probably all going to die. And then... <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't think we're going to make it, girls. That's what I told them. <laughs> Well, that's too yeah. bad. Yeah, that's Dad's a lot gotta of go, snow. It's Dad's got to go do a talk show, but I don't think we'll make it. No, I think we're going to make it. Yeah. Uh, uh, this this thing is mind-boggling, and I understand there was a fourth show at Madison Square Garden, yeah. which you uh, suspended because people can't come out in the snow. That's right. It was tomorrow night. I sold out four shows. Right. I did three of them, and then tomorrow was the next one. But you know, it's nobody crazy. Come to that. Nobody's yeah. going to be here. Yeah. Well, the congratulations. That's one of those things in your career. You should be very, very proud. I of. am. It was pretty great. Yeah. yeah. Good Thanks. for you. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, when you when you work in an enormous arena like that, yeah. how how do you create? an intimacy that would be conducive to comedy. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, if you go see a, a concert like a, like a rock band, mm -hmm. you, everybody's going, woo, you know, but that's not appropriate during comedy because no. you're supposed to just listen. Yes. Po politely, yeah. you know. <laughs> so it is a weird feeling that there's 15,000 people yeah. and they're just sitting there listening. It's, <laughs> it's a little unnerving. Well, that, that's, that's a tremendous piece of power that you have over, and, and that's a great uh, tribute to you, a great respect Well, it does. It feels good to make them all laugh at the same time. Mm -hmm. 15,000 people laughing at your jokes. That's a, it's kind of a, an amazing feeling. But also having them sit there looking at you, listening, is really great, too. But I always see, I've done it three times now, and it, it was the same every time, that they're all laughing, the show's going great, but what I see are, there's at least, in 15,000 people, there's like a thousand disappointed people. There's like a thousand people. <laughs> no. And they're dotted, I see them all. You see them? I see them still today, but during the show, <laughs> I see them, just guys going like, ah. Yeah. Those are the ones that you really see. Everyone's going, yay, and I'm just, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I, that you're reading their disappointment accurately. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm 100% sure. Well, I'm not sure that's true, but I, I share the feeling. I know that. Hell, I know it here tonight. <laughs> um, well, the more, the more people you reach and the more people that see you, the more people are going to think that you suck. Mm. That's just a law of mathematics. Yes, but you let, can't me, please everybody. Let, let me explain it to you this way. If, yeah. in fact, that's true, why would those people go to the trouble of ordering the tickets online and showing up? This is just miserable <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They just like to go to... That's not their fault. Well, no. Okay. That's not their fault. I don't know. They heard I was good. Case closed. They heard I was no. good. Well, you ought to... Is there a discount if you're a miserable... <laughs> It should be. <laughs> yeah, there really ought to be in life. Um, now, uh, when I started doing stand-up comedy, I went to a place called the Comedy Store. Yeah. And I love the Comedy Store because, for one thing, there is no better location for a club, especially in Los Angeles, than right there on Sunset Boulevard. That's right. Looking out at the beautiful lights and the yeah. nighttime and the sunset, the excitement and so forth. And you also worked there, but yeah. you... Uh, you didn't uh, what is the problem you didn't like it or you do like it well um, you have to pass audition there no matter who you are and I never really worked there because they wouldn't I didn't get a chance to audition and then at one, at one point I'd been on your show I was a known comedian and I called and said can I work the comedy store they said you still got to audition 
Um, so, so you have to come in and, and, and they put you up for a, like a... Yeah, they put you up for a few minutes and you do your act for Mitzi Shore, who is the owner. She's the, the owner one of the She club, started yeah. the club. Mm -hmm. And so Mitzi Shore, uh, said, I came into audition and uh, she's sitting in this table directly across from me. And I go on, and there's a light here that indicates... They used to have a light that would flash. It was like Eddie, Eddie Cantor's portrait, uh, caricature, yeah. and it would go on at the end of five minutes. That's right. Yeah. So when you see Eddie Cantor, get off stage. That's right. Basically. So I go on, and I say, hi, everybody. And I start... I don't think I said, hi, everybody. But <laughs> I start... Hey, hi, you miserable... <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> I said hello, and I started a joke, and the light went on immediately. <laughs> and I thought, well, that can't, that can't really be it. Yeah, it gotta be so it. I keep going, and I see Mitzi, and she's going like this. Literally, she's going, <laughs> like pointing, and really? then doing this. Oh, Get off. my goodness. And I thought, well... I've been doing this like, I've never been doing it like 20 years. I was like, I'm not gonna get off stage after 10 seconds. No. no. So I did like five minutes, the audience liked me. And then I left and my manager called and she said, I hated him, it's terrible. So I just, I wasn't allowed to work there. So did you, you never went back? I know, no, I'm no I, after a while, like, you know, I mean, I don't know, she's, I don't think she knows who's there all the time now. She's pretty old. She's still there, but mm -hmm. I sneak in and I go, I just shot a, a comedy special there. That's what I'm talking about. And That's I, what I don't I think if, I think if she about. sees it, she's going to be like, that kid doesn't work well, my club. It doesn't belong there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what I think this is? I think it's some yeah. kind of a misunderstanding. Because I, I would think, one, Mitzi Shore would love you, and two, uh -huh. even if she didn't love you, she would love the fact of you. You know what I'm saying? It's really nice, Dave, because you've stuck up for me against the <laughs> at the MSG. <laughs> and Mitzi Shore, but the fact is these people just don't like me. <laughs> Sometimes you have to just accept now, the fact that some folks just hate you. Now what? <laughs> and I do. I yeah. like, live with you. Know, I've you made live my with peace it. with that. Now listen. <laughs> Uh, when we, we come back, I want to see a little bit of this special sure. you filmed at the Comedy Store. Okay. We'll be right back with Louis C.K. I'm going I'm to start telling people that I sold out Madison Square Garden, and they're going to say, wow. And I say, yeah, but you know, it was the, it was the night of the big blizzard. <laughs> Uh, before we get to the, uh, t t tell me about the uh, yeah. Super Bowl. What do you care? Do you like? Do you want? Do you do you know anything? Well, I'm from Boston, so I'm a Patriots fan. Yeah. And, uh, and what, why are they so oily? <laughs> well, because they want to win real bad. Yeah. So sometimes you do stuff that's not fair, <laughs> so that you can win. <laughs> I have no problem with it. I think it's hilarious. It's, it's, well, it is hilarious. And, uh, uh, why yes. not? It's yeah. a stupid football game. Yeah. I mean, just deflate the balls, poke a guy in the eye or whatever. Yeah. It's football. Uh, but now, uh, I've been, I put a lot of thought to this because I, I don't have a... I mean, other than the fact that they beat my Indianapolis Colts. Well, there, uh, yeah. and, and people, football people, tell me that an that a underinflated football usually represents about 45, 50 points. It's yeah, different, exactly. Different like that's, game. that's a stretch. So now I'm, now I'm hot. Right. Sure. Uh, but it was uh, the, the Tom Brady's at the press conference after the, yeah. the, the Ravens. Have you heard this story? Yeah, he's talking about his See, balls and stuff the whole time. No, no, no. About, this is after the Ravens game. Oh, I'm game. sorry. I don't know. And, and he's saying the Ravens are upset because they're running trick plays and they got different lineups and uh, formations and stuff. Yeah. And Brady says, well, they should uh, read the rule book. Now the Ravens think, wait a minute. Yeah. Pretty boy is telling us to read the rule book? Right. So the guy, Harbaugh, calls Pagano in Indianapolis, and he says, you know what? They're using underinflated balls. Make a stink about it. Yeah. And that's how the whole thing started. So yeah. Tom Brady is getting for shooting his mouth off. He's getting it right back. That's right. It's yeah. great. Yes. It's great. It's fun. <laughs> it is fun. It is. It's fun. When it's your turn to use the rules, you use it against the other team. Mm -hmm. And when you want to do something wrong in order to win, you do that. Yeah. And then you get caught and people yell at you and you just go, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, that's right. I'm positive that's what happened. That's what happened. <laughs> now, Belichick. I think that uh, Bill Belichick and Brady had a meeting and they said, well, how we can, can we get an edge? And he said, I, I'd really like the football to be easier to grab. Yeah. And he said, okay, I'll deflate it. And afterwards, just say, just keep, just deny it no matter what anybody says. <laughs> it would Why be not? great if they, if they uh, deflate it and put a squeaky thing in it. <laughs> uh, but now, are these the lessons you teach your girls at home? 
Well, they're not ever going to play football. <laughs> well, I, I think this is confined <laughs> to football. It's only in the world of well, football. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. You, you, there's a balance with your kids because you want them to be honest people. Mm -hmm. Because you want to be able to say you raised an honest person. Sure. But you want them to have a good life. <laughs> You want them to use every tool available to them. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes lying is a very effective no. way. No. Louis, this is where you and I are going to part company because I Why? will tell you now something that I know you know and I know you've told your kids. Mm -hmm. uh, honesty is its own reward. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, here's the thing about, to me, about lying is that I don't think you should do it, uh, but I get it. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it. I right, get it. Right. Because kids lie because they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in trouble as a kid, it's too much. It's, you can't take it. You know, yeah, kids don't lie for some weird Machiavellian, you know, they're yeah. not like, you know what my teacher said about you? It's interesting. You know, they don't, they're not trying to start no, something. No, <laughs> It's because somebody was like, did you take the chocolate? And they're terrified. Yeah. It's terrified. Yeah. If you're in trouble, you don't care. You're grown up. You just go, oh, sorry. Right? Well, again... Again, I've, I've been in trouble, and yeah. that didn't work. <laughs> and I tried it. I said it just like yeah. that. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Let's uh, look at a clip. Now, okay. this is at the, uh, the big room in the comedy That's store. That's right, the main room, yeah. Yeah, they have a big, uh, beautiful, uh, it's a nice uh, club for comedy generally. Yeah. And uh, here's Louis doing his act. And what else do we need to know about it's this? It's just about when you have a baby on an airplane and the baby's crying. Okay, it's from the comedy store. Last month you filmed this, right? That's right. All right, take a look. Louis C.K., live at the comedy store. I remember one time my baby was crying on the plane. She was really upset. And this guy and some businessman on the plane, because businessmen always think that every flight is a private plane of theirs. <laughs> that we're all like piggybacking on. <laughs> and this guy has this <laughs> newspaper and he turns around to look at me and my baby and he looks right at me. He doesn't kind of like go like this. He looks at me like, hmm? <laughs> like, could you? <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry, is this bothering you? Let me just. That's exactly right. You can uh, download this uh, tomorrow, beginning tomorrow, as Louis C.K. live at the Comedy Store. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Good Dave. to see you again. Thank you Thanks very much. We'll be right back with Paul Wallace.